Hey, Janelle, Zach, hi, how's it going? Good, Charles. Good, how are you? Good. So quick and easy, what do you like best about working with each other? <laughs> Zach, you can go first. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, well, we've had the pleasure now, even though season one is launching, we're going to season two. So we've had two full seasons of getting to know each other and, uh, and uh, both on screen and off screen. And, and I think we all have the same sense of humor and sensibilities and the same uh, work ethic. So it's pretty easy to work with people who come prepared, come to have fun, come with a great positive energy and also get the work done. So we all kind of just click with that. And now with, with how long we've been doing it, it's uh, there's a shorthand between us all. So it's just, it's really fun. It's, you know. This is why I let Zach go first. <laughs> 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 we put it all perfect. <laughs> I feel exactly the same way. We legit have become a family in these short two years. Um, but everything he said, I, I completely agree with. Now, Janelle, there's an article in the New York Times actually about the rise of Schitt's Creek. And you're the first person that's mentioned. <laughs> about my nails and stuff? <laughs> exactly, about your hand care. I was going to ask, I hadn't seen. But... Uh, Really yeah, I have a slight obsession. It's and it's a real, it's a real life thing. Even on the show, I do my nails every single Sunday. I don't go and get them done. I'm a little psycho, but it is. That's funny that you brought up that article. <laughs> well, interestingly, I I watched that episode that you're in, mm -hmm. and two of the guest stars, um, as well by chance on that episode, Saul Rubinek, who of course you worked with previously, <laughs> and Victor yep. Garber, who you're and working Victor with now. And did you also know that it's directed by Jordan Canning, who directed Jordan our Canning, popular yeah. episodes? So we have it's it's a it's a whole thing. But I didn't know that until after the fact. Ironically enough, uh, Jordan was the one that told me, and I couldn't obviously we didn't have any scenes together, so I had no idea. I was kind of sad I didn't get to see Saul or Victor, but then I got to work with Victor, and we both couldn't believe we were in the same episode, and I had no idea until after. I really do uh, like Jordan Canning and uh, the style, um, particularly for the first few episodes, which I'd seen. What's something that you're excited for? You know, what I, what I think is, is great is that your characters kind of, you know, we learn a little bit more about you towards the, the beginning, the first few episodes. Zach, I, I think your character still, we have a, a lot to learn. Um, we get some hints, you know, perhaps the, the bike might be a hint, the electric bike, but what's something, what I like about the show in part is that it reveals itself and, you know, you get to know a little bit about you, about the, sort of the ideas behind it. What, what do you like most about that? I agree. I love that they sort of dove right in with Lucy. Uh, you get to see everything right up front by the end of episode two. You kind of go, oh, you know, she's not as perfect as she seems to be in that first episode. And I, I love that. I love that she's flawed. I love that she's real. I love that all the characters are for that matter. Um, you get to see that with Zach's character. Also, I'll let him talk about that. But shortly after, mm -hmm. Um, you get to see Zach sort of all his quirks, all the things that make him, he's not as straight forward as he seems to be in the beginning, which is nice, but the show does a great job of highlighting every, each character's journey um, in the second season, even more so. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let Zach continue on, but that's what I really love. I love that they just dove right in and there's no, there's no guessing. Um, we're, we're an open book. Yeah, I think, I think just to pick up off that, I I, I, it obviously starts with the writing and because the writing is so sharp and so strong and so clear that it's really easy to tell um, these character stories, but you don't have to, you don't have to doll it all out all at one time and all in one episode and get somebody's complete backstory. You know, like audiences are so smart now. They're so accustomed to really good television that, and wanting and, uh, wanting and willing to invest a long time. You know, we do 10 one hour episodes that you know, we're, we're gonna go on a journey here and you're gonna learn about these characters as they go through. And so there's no fear of you know, giving a little detail, a little nugget of information, a little quirk, a little side of that other character that you see in one episode. And then you know, it pays off three or four episodes later. I think that is the, the funnest part because it's interesting storytelling. And as actors doing it, you know, we also get a, to participate with the director and the writers and the showrunners, everybody who's there. And we get, we get to kind of mold that together. And that's good television when, when good, just good storytelling in general, you can do that. I've seen a lot of your, both of you, your work previously. Uh, for this show in particular, uh, as you were saying, Zach, it feels like it just fits, you know, within the pocket that it's contemporary and modern, but also, you know, feels like it, it's bringing in uh, previous ideas as well too. What do, you, what do you think is sort of like the best fit 
of this show? How does how does it just feel like the right fit right now? Well, as an actor or just as a show in general? Well, as an actor in particular, yeah. As an actor, uh, the thing that I love most about the show, the, the reason why I think it fits, uh, well, for all of us so well, I, I can speak for all of us because, uh, <laughs> um, is that the show itself, even though it's a law procedural, it's a drama, you know, you mentioned Jordan Canning and her style, all that, like she, she did the first two episodes. One of the first things, because the scripts are actually quite funny, the characters mm-hmm. have senses of humor and they're, you know, they, the, the sibling dynamic between uh, Jewel, Janelle, and myself with a father figure like Victor Garber, you know, all that. There's the nuances of, of how um, relate, sibling relationships and family relationships are, so they can be catty and undercutting and sarcastic and all that. And so Jordan really highlighted those things. Like, let's bring, let's make sure we, the funny is still there, even though we might be dealing with important cases. So for me, the way it fits the best is it fits, it feels like real life because it swings back and forth so many different times between it can be a real quite serious moment, a dramatic build to something or something very important, a case that's serious. And, but yet you can still be in a moment that I'm, I'm, I'm in a tissy fit with, with Janelle and her character because we just had a personal thing outside. And so we bring that in, you know, like the, all those little details of real life uh, are staying true in it, I think. And that's, that's what's really fun to play. Mm. It also feels like for as a show, you can almost get away with more. You know, I, I don't think I don't think a show like this would have been necessarily ready, maybe even a few years back. So it quite it feels quite contemporary modern in that way. How do you feel like it's sort of you know evolved or it's of this particular moment? I, I'd say on that, just kind of what Zach had just said, the fact that it is a dramedy. Um, and just the times that we're in right now, I think it's nice to have both sides. You, you can, you know, there's so many episodes where it's insanely heartfelt and you're bawling and in the exact same moment, um, there's a humor in it that is natural. Um, it's not forced in any way. Uh, I think we've all been stuck at home (laughs) and not able to do much for a very long time. And it's nice to kind of have TV that's just, real um real cases real stories but with real life humor in it there there's no gimmicks there's there's nothing forced like i said um and i think it's perfect for the times i think that's what a lot of people want to see we we don't want to always see the doom and gloom uh, but at the same time we do love a procedural a lot of people love procedurals so it's really nice to kind of have a family dynamic like zach says we bring in our own personal stories into the office and then we go boom right into you know different cases that have their own craziness going on it's just a lot happening in an hour but it doesn't feel heavy and it goes by really super quick again it's kudos to the writers. Um, They're brilliant at what they do. We read scripts and we just go, what, how, (laughs) what just happened? Um, But I think people will really, truly enjoy that. And Charles, just to pick up on that, actually, because uh, you asked about what makes this show kind of in the moment um, is the going into the law part, you know, a lot of the cases that we touched on, if you saw the first two, you know, we get, we get uh, deeper and more connected to things that, you know, especially these last couple of years uh, that have been happening in pop, pop culture and in our political world and in Canadian politics specifically in that. And uh, it's really fun to do episodes as lawyers, because this is a law, uh, you know, a law drama that we, we get to, we get to flush out kind of all sides and all perspectives of these things. And that's what's because re- all the characters bring in their own different, you know, uh, points of view. Uh, and also depending on what side of the case that we're on and arguing, you know, like it's just, I find, I find uh, th- this show for a, for a network television show that can get into the kind of the detail and the nuance and the nitty gritty mm-hmm. with such care and specificity is really fun and really uh, unique, I think. Mm. I don't want to drop back too much to your previous work. I just want to highlight a little bit, you know, Janelle, for example, the holiday calendar, I thought was a really refreshing take. <laughs> Um, I quite like that movie. You know, Zach, certainly when you're talking procedural, I'm thinking about Cardinal and coming off of the work there. And, yeah. you know, when you were saying you're bringing in sort of your personal experiences, how much do you feel like in this show you get to bring in, I mean, previous work, but also, you know, who you are and how you feel? I, I guess I'll, I'll go for sure. <laughs> um, that's a good question. And my answer is probably going to be really boring because I, I don't know whether... I, I bring much of any of my previous work, to be quite honest with you. Um, 
haven't done much work that's like Lucy, to be quite honest. Um, at the same time, I guess, you know, she's very different from I am, but at the same time, we are similar. We're similar in the sense of, you know, caring for the greater good and, and wanting everybody to sort of get along and wanting things to be fixed and want everything to be okay. Um, I, I think that's probably the only similarity I would say, which comes naturally. The rest of it, not so much. <laughs> um, but I, I, it would be nice to be able to, you know, draw on some other characters. But I've, I've honestly never played anyone like Lucy before, which is one of the things I really, truly love about her. I get to explore, I get to have fun, and it's something new every episode. You're definitely the, the that caregiver part of uh, Janelle. <laughs> people is definitely part of Lucy. I would say it's funny we had this yeah. we had this like joke between Janelle and myself and Jewel about just like there'll be moments what what on screen or off we'll be hanging out or you know having dinner I'm like oh that's such a Daniel moment oh my god we <laughs> turning into Daniel I'm like oh my god yeah so, yeah I, just to pick up on that we obviously um, I, you know there's parts that you bring to your to the characters I sometimes I'm not sure where that line starts or begins I know I know certainly there are qualities of Daniel that I can connect to of his work ethic and his you know how serious he takes um, his job and uh, his wanting to to do his best and be the best and all that uh, but you know there's other parts of like he he takes himself so seriously I you know I would think I, I don't take myself as seriously I have a sense of humor and, a, and uh, I think it can be a little less uptight even though we can all be like that um, and I also think that uh, Daniel, even though you don't quite see it, I, 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 at least at the beginning, uh, first half of the season, he has a really big heart and it's just struggling to kind of showcase that uh, amongst his role as a lawyer and amongst his family members who uh, he's struggling, jockeying for position of both importance in the, in the eyes of, of their father, Harry, and w amongst each other. So that's, that's really fun to play. And I, I think... You know, there's qualities of myself that can come on that. I don't know if I could dissect as, as well as that. Mm. So excited to see, um, you know, for season one that everyone's going to be watching Family Law and, you know, uh, renewed for a season two as well, which is so great to see. Curious for both of you, what's sort of your um, preference right now as viewers? You know, has there been anything that you've connected with as viewers recently that you've really enjoyed? I haven't. Honestly, I haven't watched a lot. G watches a lot more TV than I do. I have not, I have not uh, got into a show in a long time, just both for work-wise. It's for, you know, when we're shooting, it's quite hard when you're doing like 12, 14 hour days. Like, oh, let me just watch a couple mm -hmm. episodes. But I did most recently, um, I started watching Ted Lasso and mm. I've really enjoyed that. And I think I've enjoyed it so much. One, just for the sense of humor and the kind of the lightness of it, but especially, you know, I've, Everyone's been watching a lot of television during the last 18 months or 19 months or whatever with mm -hmm. the pandemic and kind of swaths of different shows. I'm kind of over currently right now, all the really dark and nitty gritty and like stuff that wrenches at your soul and gives you nightmares at when you go to sleep. I'm kind of, I, I kind of don't need that right now, a little bit of optimism. And I think the Ted Lasso character specifically just kind of epitomizes that. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm only in the first season, but that's, that's, the, sh that's the show I'm watching. Yeah. I've heard Zach talk a lot about Ted Lasso in the last <laughs> a couple of days. I'm just like in the last couple of weeks since the first day he started watching it, he told all of us about Ted Lasso. Oh yeah, uh, and we had to watch it. I, he's right. I do watch more television. Um, I'm a little bit of an insomniac, so when I don't sleep, I watch TV. It's what I do. Um, but I also don't have as much of a grueling schedule as Zach and Jewel do. So on my days off. If I'm not roaming the streets of Vancouver, I'm watching something. Um, but I would say probably recently I just started, I, I went back because Succession is coming back and it's one of my mm -hmm. favorite shows. Um, and I've gone back and watched the last five episodes just so that I would remember what the heck's going on because it's been a very long time um, with COVID. That's a lot of shows that are coming out this fall that have been delayed by almost a year. So it's kind of trying to catch up on stuff. Um, but that would probably be the last one as a viewer that I really sort of related to and loved would be Succession, yeah. So I want to pick up the, on that idea, that theme of, you know, that your show in particular, it does feel like it is, you know, upbeat, that there is that element there of, you know, that you can explore maybe darker themes or you can have conflict, but it does seem like there is a message of positivity, that there's a message of inclusivity. So, you know, how do you, you, you're farther along than I am, but, you know, how does it feel sort of within the context of the show that you're able to do that? 
Zach? Uh, I think I think it goes back to the writing and the the story creation uh, from our, you know our creator Susan Nielsen and uh, mm. all of our writing team and our showrunner Andy Nikita. You know that that was the fun of be starting the show when we the beginning of the pandemic of like when you first start you know the first two episodes you're like figuring out really what is the tone it's on the page but like what is the what are the moments what is the style what is the look and I think they were really quite clear at the beginning like you, you know and reading at least for me when we were auditioning for it like you know you kind of get a sense of it but like how funny is it is do you lean more on the funny do you lean more on the dramatic and you know we've the the show. I think weaves a very nice uh, thread between those two worlds, as I said before. And um, I think, yeah, I, I just, I think it comes back down to the writing. And um, I love that we can pull in, in serious moments, topics that are really pertinent to people and we can still be playing brother and sister and be jerks to each other and, or loving or having, having you know a dramatic personal meltdown in our own lives but then you got to put on a, a, a you know a, a brave face because you're going to work you got to go represent somebody who's also dealing with something I, I think that the the foundation of the show is the relationships that carries through uh all the cases all the undercurrent of the show and I think because there's love wh whether it's you know overt or not in all these relationships that's what makes the show kind of more on the positive side than you know people getting murdered and disfigured and you know buried in you know those kind of shows that we you know, <laughs> not doing that and speaking of inclusivity um I, we definitely you know we have all of those uh i don't want to say boxes checked but it's very inclusive without feeling forced um Good there's 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 nothing that we're we're missing there's nothing that feels cliche there's it just is what it is. It's, it's very real. Um, you know, some people want to make such a, a big deal out of it, uh, but it just really, truly is what it is. It's it's life. It's everyday people. Um, and at the same time, yes, we are very inclusive, and it's one of the things that I love about this show that we do it in such a normal, natural way, um, and we talk about topics that are very relevant today, um, from young to old, uh, everybody in between. It's it's beautiful to see on television. I really can't wait for people to see it. I as well, and also the sense of family. And it's been nice to see your dynamic today too. So thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking with both of you and I wish you the best. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. Thank you for your time.